Hello, everybody. I'm Mel Dor, the Aloha Shirt Psychic, and it's Aloha Tuesday, and I have Arthur Ease Your Mind in the house. Hello. Hello. So, Arthur, if they want to get a hold of you, how do they do it? After saying a rosary, you say... <laughs> No, it's you can't um, polish the beads, okay? <laughs> it's basically um from YouTube, it's Arthur Ease Your Mind here on YouTube or www.artheaseyourmind.com. Arthur spelled A R T H U R, not O R. <laughs> or sometimes people put Arthur A U, like the author of a book. I know. I, I always mispronounce it. It's Author and Arthur. Just don't call me Artie. Or think about or think of Uncle Arthur from Bewitched, okay? You'll be able to say it that way. All in. Yeah. <laughs> so Arthur Ease Your Mind. Arthur Mind dot com. And the phone number is 310 Hold on, hold on. 310-494-494-5955. All right. Five nine five five. Got it. So everybody, give him a call. Call him. Email him. Phenomenal psychic. He does wonderful psychic work. And um, yay. So does he. I don't know what you're going to but so does he. So does Mel. And um, the cat's out of the bag. <clears throat> Arthur is going to be emceeing our urban retreat at the end of February. So if you're interested in finding out pricing, all about it, you can call my office at 847-590-5411. And I will have Joan call you back. She's part of my office staff. Or you can go on my, uh, the, we don't have a, we don't have um, a brochure on my website as of yet. Uh, Arthur's working on that. And so, uh, but you can email me at www.meldor, M-E-L-D-O-E-R-R.com. So www.meldor.com, email me or call my office, 847-590-5411. So there you go. Or for a reading, you can call me there too. <laughs> Please call for reading. And now, to, does it mean I have to show up like Joel Gray from Cabaret? To what? Now, being an MC, does that mean I have to dress up like Joel Gray from Cabaret? No, and you don't have to sing Money Makes the World Go Around, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got some questions, but before we get started with questions, um, some events going on. So, mm -hmm. Arthur, do you have yes. events you would like to bring up or ask questions about? Well, it seems Humpty Dumpty got his 175 million for his uh, whatever you call it, so we can take the things to court again. But I still feel it's I don't know the money where it's coming from. It just does not seem legit. I know it's some insurance companies or whatever, but it just seems like they're going to find something out down the line on it. Well, it I keep feeling they will as well. But here's the thing that makes me mad about it is that whoever is the head of this insurance company and you know he gets to do with his money whatever he wants but people pay insurance premiums and you know if i were having insurance for that company i would be hopping mad that it used money to loan somebody money to post a bail mm -hmm. <clears throat> because of uh, vilifying and slandering somebody um yeah. And I've got a sneaking hunch. I sound like church lady. A sneaking <laughs> hunch. That, special. Something that's special. I've got a sneaking hunch that some way or another, T. Rump is going to default on that money. I got a sneaking hunch. So we'll see how that plays out. I don't think you need to be a psychic to know that one, considering his track record. Well... It is a psychic hit for entertainment purposes only. Yes. Let us entertain you. 
let us make you smile. But you know, I I was kind of mad that he only got by with having to pay one seventy five as 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 what uh, as a bond, but he has to pay interest on that daily, and that's going to add up. But I still see a paper trail on <clears throat> where the money. Hmm. Well, well, that was the one thing that irked me this week. This I'm sorry. Today. That's the one thing that irked me on Monday. That. But, um, excuse me, just a second. I'm sorry, my phone's going off. <laughs> um, it never fails. Whenever I do a show, my phone goes off. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it or not, but <laughs> all right, there you go. Um, I just turned it off. <laughs> Anyway, I, I've got it turned off, but I can hear it. My hearing aids, nobody else can hear it. Um, now, what about Judge Juan Merchant, I think? Mershon. 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 Thank you. How do you pronounce it? Juan. <laughs> that he expanded a gag order to stop <clears throat> Donald Trump from making nasty attacks against the judge's daughter. Um, but then shortly after that, Trump supposedly pasted a clip on True Social uh, in which Fox News host Brian Kilmeade, I think, disparaged her. <laughs> so even though Trump didn't do it himself, my feeling is he put somebody up to it. So it's a second right. party. So we know we both know that he used that commentator to do his work. Do work. Okay, thank you. So my feeling is it's going to be extended even more that he can't do it through a second party, third party, social media, or whatever. Uh, and I just heard now that Trump is trying to have Judge Mershon, is that correct? Yes. Ousted. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, because I guess his daughter did some work for the Dems. Um, but... Uh, Trump is not going to succeed, in my uh, psychic opinion, of getting Juan Mershon ousted. It's not going to work. Um, no, it's like apples and watermelons. Correct. Right. One has nothing to do with the other. Uh, but he's now forbidden, I guess, from verbally attacking the families of District Attorney Bragg and Judge Mershon. Um, I've got a funny feeling when I was reading this story, my light bulb went on, and I saw... Lauren Mershon, uh, the target of Trump's attacks, I saw her filing a lawsuit against him uh, for slander, and I see her winning. Well, the thing is, he's claiming that she put up this website, stuff on her website. It's not hers. It's not hers. It's and guess, guess what website it came on? Uh, I think it came on X, was it? Yeah. And so, and I think she's also going to sue the commentator that said that because, she well, and she's going to win. But uh, she's a private person. She's not a public figure. Correct. Because they said that, I think Kill Me the, said that, um, that she posted a photo of Trump behind bars, but uh, it was not her account. It came from an ex account she hasn't used in years and no longer has access to it. So we know who had it posted, don't we? Hmm. I wonder who that could be. But the thing that really fries me about it is it's okay for Trump to post a picture of Biden being hogtied. Oh, that yet, one, that, oh God, that's what I was just going to bring up next. That. But yet, but yet, He's spouting off about this, look what she posted against me, blah, 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 or whatever. We didn't say it, but he had some well, commentators say it. Well, do you remember years ago, Kathy Griffith had the thing with Trump's head? And she was yeah. blacklisted for five years or so, and the Secret Service came and met with her and everything. Yeah, here we have our current president being hogtied. Right. Back right. with Trump. Right. So the hypocrisy of that, and Trump gets by with it with his base, but I think he's losing a lot of popularity because of his vitriol. 
but um and and the humor is so sophomoric it's not even you know it's like child stuff it is well it is but the sad part is people go for it but i still see lauren Marchand at some point filing a lawsuit against trump and that commentator and i see a lot more lawsuits coming against that certain so-called news channel and against trump oh so, yeah i agree with you a and it's huge huge settlements yeah because um, again she's a private person there you go <laughs> um yeah trump said that she's compromised because that the judge Mershon is compromised because of lauren's work with democrats it's like what well does that mean that uh clarence thomas is compromised with what his wife does thank you <laughs> the hypocrisy blows me away yeah um, and I guess other comments about Netanyahu's forces killed seven people from World Central Kitchen, and they were, uh, I think they were in a convoy with the charity's logo, and they had coordinated their movements with the Israeli military, and Netanyahu said the attack was tragic and unintentional. My intuition tells me that he's using food as a weapon of war and that I've got a funny psychic feeling that they meant to attack that convoy as a warning to other people that are trying to do terrible work with food in Gaza not to do it. I agree. I agree. And um, they had the big protests against Netanyahu over the weekend. Yes. And you know what? When I saw that, I'm seeing that there's going to be tens of thousands of more people protesting against Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I'm, I've been predicting I'm he's gone in June, July. I'm sorry? I've been predicting June, July, he steps down. I see him gone, too, as well. You know, I'm pro-Israel, but anti-Netanyahu. I see a, a leader coming to Israel that will bring about be very hard working in in bringing about peace in the Middle East. And both you and I have predicted that at some point Israel would become would stay as its own state and Palestine would be its own state. Right. I also feel for some reasons I'm not going to say I'll be a prime minister, but there's a female that's going to I get female energy around this that's going to be very instrumental in getting this thing resolved. I've been saying that for a long time that I see at some point a female prime minister coming to power in Israel who will be no nonsense. Well, and I keep on getting... Won't put up with anybody attacking Israel, but will be a real peace. I mean, I keep on getting images of gold in my ear. That's what I had yeah. likened it to, but I see somebody even more effective than gold in my ear. Well, for her day, she, she did the most she could. Right. Um, so, um, and now Iran says it's going to retaliate against Israel because supposedly Israel bombed an Iranian embassy. But I think there's some underhanded stuff going on with that, too. I think Iran probably did it to its own embassy. That's I was going to say they blew up their own thing and blaming them for it. That's right. Just like, you know, Iran worked with Putin with and Hamas to attack Israel. But my feeling is my psychic impression, I keep saying this is that Israel knew about it and they were warned about it. Netanyahu didn't do anything. It's almost like he wanted it to happen so it would give him an excuse to wag the dog. <laughs> right. To go in there and do what he did. Correct. It's, it's... To take the heat off of him because he knew he was in hot water. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well he's being yeah they were they were doing a lot of investigations on him. Right. And I guess there's violent storms going on in multiple states across Ohio, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Uh, they're, I guess, got to have the most serious risks. Um, I keep seeing an increase in these violent storms, tornadoes, off-season tornadoes, uh, or hurricanes coming, flooding, and it's all due to climate change. Yeah. And I see the politicians of the world getting their heads together and the citizens of the world to do something to stop this runaway climate change. I mean, look how we've seen it accelerate over the past two or three years. 
I mean, you can't deny it. Well, you some can't. do. It's like well, been outside lately. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's start. All righty. Are we ready to go with some questions here, too? Go for it, Mr. Mel. Okay. Flex says, hi, y'all. I, I live in Texas and would like to know if Abbott will try withdraw from the union. Thank you all so much. Well, if he secedes, that is illegal. He could be arrested, but I think he's trying his own way of secession without saying it's secession. <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, he's trying his own, you know, foreign policy using the uh, um, using the guards, you know, at the border and everything else, you know. But he's not going to succeed. And what about the politicians that went down to Texas to look at the so-called crisis at the border? And nothing was going on. <laughs> it was a nice photo op for Fox. That's about it, right? <laughs> then they said, "Oh, they went to the wrong place." Not. Well, how are they going to, they make it sound like these, like, you know, the multitudes are trying to cross, it would, it would not just be one place, it'd be the whole border, right? And it's like, it's a handful of people and it's nothing like what they're saying. No. It's just politicizing it. All right. Okay. Jenna says, what does Nikki Haley really think of Trump? That's an excellent question. <laughs> I don't want to go to YouTube jail. Okay, but the clean version. <laughs> He's nuts. He's nuts. He's bat as crazy. She can't stand him. That's what I'm picking up. Yeah. She's going to be formidable against him. But that's a good question, Jenna. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Hello, Auntie Mel and Arthur. Thank you so much for helping all the people to have confidence and have faith and believe that Biden will win. Thank you for your help. God bless you, your family, and your friends. Thank you. That was very, very nice to say. Thank you. It makes the work worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just saw that, um, and you can't go with polls really, but I saw that, you know, if, if without Kennedy in the mix, that Biden is ahead of Trump right now, but with Kennedy in the mix, it makes it neck and neck with Biden and Trump. And people are worried that uh, Kennedy will take votes away from Biden, but I think he's also going to take votes away from Trump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I feel it's more from Trump than from Biden. And I don't think he's going to do all that well. He should just stay out of it. <laughs> but I think he's not going to, I don't see him going that far politically. Do you? I don't either. You know, I don't and now I do see another Kennedy putting their hat in the ring, not this election cycle, but at some point who will be a Democrat and not an anti-vax or all that crazy nonsense that this Kennedy is spewing. Um, and I see another Kennedy someday as president. Hmm. And I see it a lot sooner than later. And we'll see it in our lifetime. I don't want to, I don't want to live to 103. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I don't want to live to 103. <laughs> I think it'll happen before that time. <laughs> that was a good comeback, though. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Do you have one you'd like to ask? Yeah. From RSA West. Hi, Mel and Arthur. Will Jared, the human mannequin, be held accountable for being 45's bag man during Mango's presidency? Will he be held accountable for the profiteering during the pres during the pandemic? Will he be held accountable for his part in Khashoggi's murder? I don't know about Khashoggi's murder, but I see him being indicted and held accountable for numerous things. And when they start holding him accountable, he's going to sing like a canary against Trump. Mm -hmm. um, wonder how he's going to look in orange sliders. You know, sliders of those orange shoes they give you. In I was just going to wonder what he's going to look like when he can't get his Botox shots. Watch it. The melting man. I think they should put Botox in the water supply. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. I see no, your no. eyebrows going up a little bit. Yours must be wearing off. <laughs> I just got mine. 
<laughs> oh no! I'm... I just go infuse me, okay? Freeze me. <laughs> Is um a dear friend of mine's a plastic surgeon. He passed away, but there was a very famous actress that came in to see him, and she said, "What do you think you can do with this?" He said, "You have so much Botox in your face, you look stroke smooth." I'd be like, it's a needle, not a magic wand. Okay. Well, he also you have to sign. You had to sign a waiver. I understand. Plastic surgery is not reincarnation. <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but no, I see. I see um, the human mannequin going downhill. <laughs> and I've always said that you know, with the Khashoggi thing, that my guys always tell me that they will take care of it on their end. That's how they word it. Netanyahu, I feel. I'm sorry, not Netanyahu. Khashoggi, not Khashoggi. Jared. Sounds like how many syllables? Sounds like I'm still working on Botox. Um, I do see him indicted and I do see him convicted. And mm -hmm. I do see him serving jail time. And I and see a divorce him with his wife. I'm sorry? And a divorce with his wife. Well, that's down the road a piece, too. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, I think we've already answered this one, but um, I can't pronounce the name. But um, the person says, "Love you both. Thank you. Thank you." Uh, Yonan Q one. I can't pronounce it anyway. Uh, love you both. Will the protests in Israel continue until not Netanyahu is ousted? The protests are going to stop for a while, but then they're going to keep coming up again and each time there's protests there's going to be more and more and more people and they're going to be calling for him to step down and he's and i see a special vote coming to vote him out and he's going to try to put that special vote down saying that they can't do it blah 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 um and take it maybe to their supreme court or try to have his military step in but i'm going to tell you something he's not going to these people are going to keep protesting until he resigns. Until he's while gone. you were saying that, I was getting like you know the waves of the ocean, more waves of people. Like they make we quiet, but then bigger, then bigger, then eventually a tsunami. Tsunamis, plural. Yeah. Yay. So yes. Okay. Uh, I oh Sonia White says, well Jeff Jackson in North Carolina win his AG election in November. I don't I don't know that much about Jeff Jackson, do you? I don't know who that is, but I got a yes on it. Okay. Um yeah, I don't know who he is, but another round of stump the psychic. I'm sorry? Another round of stump the psychic. Give your cell phone handy, look him up real quick and see if he's a Democrat or Republican, because if he's a Democrat, he's gonna win. Well I don't have my phone here. Nope. Whatever. <laughs> it's in the other room. If he's a, See, I turn mine off and leave it in the other room so I don't got. <laughs> so I, don't get well, I read the email you sent me with the questions, but I'm also looking at my phone to see. If... <laughs> I know. I'm teasing you. I know. Well, I could hear it. In my hearing age, you couldn't hear. But it's a Patsy Klein song. When you, that's my ring. You're, you're, you're Claire on. I'm, my Claire audience was going like this. And it happened to be, I was channeling Patsy Cline. She's one of my favorite singers. Remember years and years ago where they used to do dental work on people and they put the wrong, the filling in and all of a sudden they pick up radio stations? I didn't do Lucille Ball once, she said, during the war. Yeah, they put a, it was an amalgam, a mercury amalgam. <laughs> and in some way or another, it could pick up radio waves. It's a true story. It did happen. No, sometimes. I know. I know. Um, that just reminds me of a friend of mine off topic but a friend of mine worked with uh may west towards the end i love may west I and she was doing a movie yeah, may west port of uh, posters and a big mm -hmm. may west statue i love may west <laughs> did you know she had a sister that was even more attractive than she was and they put her under contract so she wouldn't do a movie wow i never knew that yeah but also he was he said the very last movie she was making they, she's laying in a bed and they had somebody underneath her moving her arms. 
But on top of that, in she had a head, you know, she couldn't say the lines. And all of a sudden, I'll know one out of 12, one out of 12. There was a she was picking up, she was just repeating what the police station, the uh, police radio had said. That's funny. She was amazing. She, you know, she was very, she was a very talented medium. And she mm -hmm. seances and message circles. Uh, and she at her at her place and she went to them. She was very spiritual. Well, there was one time where she had was dating a black boxer and <laughs> The building she was in, they were like, we frown upon this. So she bought the building. You know, it's funny. I know this is going to sound crazy, but now that you're talking about her, I feel her spirit here. I'm just going to say the same thing. I do. I just love some of her lines. Is that a pistol in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? I got Christmas on my righty, right knee, New Year's on my left. Come up and see me in between the holidays. <laughs> you know, she got by with so much because yeah. it, it was suggestive, but never really came out. And it was like that Sophie Tucker type stuff. I mean, when she was in her 80s, I think she did that movie Myra Breckenridge mm -hmm. uh, way back when. Um, I just loved her. There's nobody can top Mae West. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's now we went down that memory lane. Okay. Jitterbug22 says, we come back to the questions. I, mean, I love her name. Jitterbug22. Me too. I love the Jitterbug. Uh, hello, Amazing Arthur and Auntie Mel. Do you see John Eastman and Jeffrey Clark indicted and convicted in the Georgia Rico case as well as disbarment? Will they wear the fancy orange suit? Thanks for your wonderful collabs. Um, you go ahead first. Da. Da. Yes. Doing yes. This Russian or what? Yeah. In case, in, because I get all these Russian bots after me all of a sudden. So yeah, da. Um, no, I'm serious. I do feel that they both will be indicted. They'll be convicted. And right now, I mean, like John Eastman's like here in California is like, trying to don't take my well, don't disbar me don't disbar me it's like you know he said it was creative lawyering or something you know the yeah, only creative thing is still against the law the only thing i can say to your dad is yeah nietzsche von there is now you know how to show paruski that's all i know in russian means i don't know how to say anything in russian <laughs> no no um no. i see uh John Eastman and Jeffrey Clark, I see their legal license revoked, mm -hmm. and I do see them under indictment of some sort. There, there will be numerous charges. They'll beat two or three of them, but then three or four more will stick. And so I see them disbarred um, and sanctioned and, um, and, and have to face some jail time. So... So yes to the orange. Da. <laughs> okay. Mary Morris says, looking forward to watching you both. Oh, thank you. I just I just went to the dentist at eight o'clock this morning. So wow. <laughs> you can see my nice the smile. Cost me enough money. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting this for $35, you can get those uh <laughs> implants. And you talk like this for a while because they just snap off. Yeah, yeah, I'll sound like Liza Minnelli. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, Peppermint Candy. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I love her. I do too. Hello, delightful dynamic duo. Will anything substantial come from the calls to investigate Ted Cruz over the large donation from uh, iHeartMedia who sponsors his, po his podcast? Thanks. Oh, that's a very good question. Yes. Duh. <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, what I've been saying is I feel he loses, but if on the chance he does win, it's because of dark money and shenanigans, which because will then be found out and then be kicked out again. Because Paxson won't count the votes correctly. Um, mm -hmm. I've often s seen uh, Ted Cruz gone. Um, hmm. We've got a room in Cancun for you, Mr. Cruz. And Coon Cruz. Um, come on, baby. No, that's the wrong, wrong, wrong place. <laughs> um, 
I do see that, you know, for a while they'll sweep those calls under the carpet because after all, we're talking about, you know, some of the powers that be in Texas. But I see those powers that be in Texas changing. And at some point, all that stuff that they've uh, swept under the rug mm -hmm. be brought out. You know, there's an old saying, if you put dog doo-doo under the rug, you can't see it, but it smells. And sooner or later, you got to take it out. And that's exactly what I see happening to Cancun Cruise. So, well, there's so much under the, they can't open the door. <laughs> there's too much. Not a rug, it's carpet. Not evil, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I've said for many years, I see him under investigation and in trouble legally. So that's a I think he should have just been arrested for reading Green Eggs and Ham on the Senate what? floor. Remember the time he was trying to do the filibuster and just talk the clock out and he was reading Green Eggs and Ham by, by Dr. Zeus? Oh, yeah. That in itself is a crime. Uh, hold on. I'm looking for more questions. All righty. Give me a second here. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? I'm just going to read one quick one. It's not oh, really ahead. a question. Go ahead. Yes, I'm going ahead. It says, hello, Auntie Mel and Arthur. Thank you so much for helping all the people to have confidence and have faith and believe that Biden will win. We've talked about that. But I just saw it again. Thank you for all your help. God bless you all, family and friends. That was what you started with. I just saw it again. So I just want to repeat it. Thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you. That's very, very nice. Because everybody like yells and screams at us when they don't like what we say. I'm sorry, say again. Because everybody else yells and screams at us when they don't like what we say. I know, but thank you. All right. Barb Mecca says RF, RFK Jr. said this week that Biden was more dangerous to democracy than Trump. Is he saying this nonsense because his financial backers forced him to? No, he's saying it because he's trying to play to the to the people that would vote for Trump that don't like Biden, he's playing to them and he wants them, them to vote for him. Mm -hmm. He's trying to out Trump Trump. Exactly, exactly. But you know what? He's not going to be able to. And he's going to catch his Waterloo real quick. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to pull up stuff on him too. You mark my words. Oh, they already have it in files. They're just waiting. To, they're just waiting. Oh, it's going to come out. Um, I like this one from Cyber Mom, as opposed to Mom. How long has Ken Paxton from Texas been corrupt? Does he <laughs> have remorse oh. when he does the things he does? Does oh. he know? Does he know him going to jail is inevitable? How long has he been corrupt? How, how, old, is he is how old is Methuselah? <laughs> True. How old is how old is is time, you know, it's as long as dirt. Right. <laughs> I, Does he have remorse? Hell no. There's no remorse. Right. No, none. Zero. This reminds me of, I was talking to a friend at Christmas. I said, why don't we just do a Christmas carol and put Trump in instead of Ebenezer Scrooge? And she's a writer. And she said, it's a lousy idea. You know why? Because at the end, Trump would just take the uh, the crutch from Tiny Tim and hit him with it. <laughs> There's no remorse. And that's the same thing here with Ken Paxton. No remorse. Back to RFK. You yeah. know, he, I, I, he's trying to call himself a Democrat, but the Democrats aren't going to allow to happen to the Democratic Party what Trump did to the Republican Party. They're going to mm -hmm. stand up and say he's not a Democrat. We don't accept him. Uh, we don't accept him as a Democrat. You know, so... Just he's the redheaded stepchild sit over there we don't recognize him well the other reason he said it is to make biden look bad because then he thinks he can win but it's it's gonna bite him in the in the you know what took us right you got it <laughs> okay um here's one hi mel and arthur what do you see for steve bannon jail <laughs> While he's awaiting his appeal for his conviction contempt of Congress, he's up to his usual antics, threatening retribution and revenge and violence when, if, 45 wins. Will he be held accountable for all his harmful actions, especially during 
January 6th, and now, is he on Jack's radar? Will he be charged after Cheeto is convicted in the federal crime trial with Judge Chuckin? Thanks. My guides tell me, and it came through just like this, he was pardoned once. Once. But when he's indicted and convicted, he will not be pardoned again. That's what came through. Very loud and clear. Um, very loud and clear. Um, so, you know, his appeal, the only reason he appealed that whole failure to show up for Congress was that he thought if he appealed it long enough after the election and Trump wins, then he'd get pardoned again. But not going to work out that way. He's going to lose the appeal, actually. And I see him having to uh, do some serve, serve some time because of he gave the middle finger to Congress, pretty much. And I don't feel it's going to be in a club fed either. I don't think it's going to be in a good place. No. <laughs> no. No. So, all right. PJ Doxon, Dot Doxon says, love you guys. Um, I have a question, but first some context. Canada is clearly falling into the grips of a far-right network of anti-LGBT mob boss-like politicians. They currently run eight of Canada's 10 provinces. Only British Columbia and Manitoba are sane. Their leader at the federal level is a dude named Pierre Polivier. Uh, uh, their leader at the federal level is a dude named Pierre Polivier. Pierre Polivier. I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, Trudeau, Justin Trudeau, who predicts LGBTQ and has done a lot of good, is reliant on his left of center party leader, Jagmeet Singh, to stay in power and keep the far right mob from ruining Canada and attacking LGBTQ women's rights, etc. Unlike Canada's power conservative political parties, these far right politicians refuse to work across the aisle, attack like Marjorie Taylor Greene, and aim to strategically dismantle Canada, e.g., attacking Canada's constitution, legal structures, political structures, etc. When do you see normalcy coming back to your northern neighbor? If elected, which I hope Biden will, do you see your fine president stepping up to stabilize the political situation that's going on in America's in America's northern border? And finally, who is funding the Canadian far right scheme? Any readings you can provide are greatly appreciated by your northern neighbors. Ooh, ooh, that was an encyclical. Uh, but my guides had warned me or sent a warning that the same thing that happened here would and could very easily happen in Canada unless Canadians got really proactive and started to speak up. And it's happening there. We know who's behind it. I think Putin's behind a lot of it. All right. I think that you know for a while it looks like they're going to gain more traction in canada but ultimately they will be stopped it's going to take a while but they will be stopped mm. uh, that's what i pick up um i don't know what you're getting on it arthur but that's what i pick up i get the same thing but i feel they're they'll be able, even though there's what she said there's different uh they're not working across the aisle. It's just like here. However, I do get them nipping a lot of stuff that's about to happen in the bud. Yes. I get people are people are seeing what happened here in the States with Trump and they don't want that. And it's, again, I feel like this small group of people got in there like cancer and now they're trying to spread. It ain't going to happen. And what they do is they put their cronies in political places like the parliament, just like they did in the House and the Senate here, mm -hmm. and just kind of escalates. But I don't and think judges and all that other crap. I don't think it's going to get as bad as in Canada as it did here because Canadians mm -hmm. are going to start to speak up. Canadians don't want it. Canadians love their democracy. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're going to, you know, um, I think Canada is going to get tired of a, of a small select few telling the rest of them are trying to take the rest of the, their rights away. It's not going to work. Well, my grandmother was French Canadian and if there's anything like her, it'd be like, shut up and sit down. 
know, that was her. Shadowman, sit down. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's a good question, though. Thank you. It's an excellent question. It's a nice, it's a nice um, you know, nice. We forget about our neighbors in the north. Exactly. Um, okay. Personality 22. This is a really good question. Um, hey, curious. Is 45 around to witness the verdict of the documents case? I'm just wondering what happens to any legal case should the defendant be otherwise detained? Wink, wink, thanks. Um, oh, he'll be around to witness the verdict of the documents case, absolutely. Well, if not, I'll get the Ouija board. We'll tell him. <laughs> we won't have to. He'll be earthbound. and We'll just do it that way. Well, we'll see what happens, but I do feel, and you've been saying the same thing, the canon is going to be removed. Unfortunately, it probably won't be heard until after the election, because the way she's mucked everything up. But it won't matter because January 6th is going to be first. Well, actually, the Stormy Daniels is first. Well, that's what I had said. That the I said that Stormy Daniels would bring him down. And then I said the women will bring him down. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the whole Georgia thing is going to be heard as well. Fonnie Willis is not going to give up and she's not going to be taken off the case. No, they're trying. They put what, into the appeals and all this other stuff. But it's like they can it's, try all the little it's, tricks. It's and a both. delay tactic, you know. Um, and he's got it delayed this far. He thinks he can delay it till after the election, but he's going to be found guilty in New York. I'm telling you. Then he'll appeal that. But I can't wait for the Green Reaper to show up in front of him and goes, I want to delay this. <laughs> yeah, right. I want to appeal it. But um, the appeals court in New York, if he tries to appeal the Stormy Daniels case, will say they'll look at it expeditiously and say there's no grounds for appeal. The other thing to bring up is people are still wondering, is the Supreme Court going to hear the whole immunity case before the election? And I feel as if they will. Yes. And he's not immune from prosecution. Yes. I've, well, the last, what is it? The 20th or something of June is the last day of their session. Right. I mean, they, I feel they'll release something before then. You know, but then again, that gives them, that still gives Judge Chutkin enough time to get things rolling. Well, I, the the court is just on my nerve delaying it. But I, you just hit on something, and when you did, my psychic light bulb went on. Oh, I like that. It gives Judge Chutkin more time, and it gives uh, Jack Smith more time to build an even stronger case, and her more time to. Um, to have some strategy not that she's going to prejudge the case she won't but the point is she's going to have all of her angles covered and i like right that. well the thing is she originally told them that when they start again they'll have 90 days to prepare that is not etched in stone she right. can say you know what yeah we had 90 days back then this is different we're moving forward we have enough time now you've That's had enough time to be working on this so and they're going to say, but you gave 30 us 30 days, days and she's going to say, but you've had that amount of time. Yeah. So and that way it can still move forward. Kill that, but it won't work. Mm -mm. No. So. And I do feel, I feel there's going to be a conviction before the election besides so, the Stormy Daniels, but with January 6th. I see. And two then or, all the names come out. I see two or three convictions before the election. You know, the election is... The whole month of April, May, June, July, August, September, October. The election is seven months away. A lot can happen between now and then. Oh, yeah. And a lot will. It's going to be a wild ride. Buckle up. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Any last words? We went through all the question. Any last words that of wisdom or any last words that of psychic words we could um, give to our depart to our, our lovely viewers yes and i want to say thank you to our viewers because without our viewers we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing and so thanks for your loving support we totally appreciate it yeah it, and if you're on mel's channel which you are because it's streaming on mel's today hit the like hit the subscribe hit the button come on people and it helps our algorithms if you leave a comment 
positive one. Thank you. And if you want to get a hold of Arthur, ArthurEaseYourMind.com or Arthur Ease Your Mind uh, YouTube. Call him 310-494-5955. So uh, if you want to get a hold of me, www.meldor, M-E-L-D-O-E-R-R.com or call 847-590-5411. The one thing that I've been stressing in my recent shows, and this is what my guides keep on telling me, is to remind everyone not to be afraid, not to freak out. Don't act like Chicken Little. It's only an acorn. <laughs> but on top of that is to be grateful that we are in a country where we do have a voice and we will be heard. That's right. Gratitude is what it's all about. And also to send out as much benevolent outcomes, love, light to everyone everywhere. But as I always say, send them light till they get it right. Oh, I like that. You know, it's like um, I keep saying when I had my cancer and I was paralyzed with fear and nobody knew it, but I was. And my guides gave me the message don't let the fear stand in front of you and hold you back. Let it get behind you and push you forward. Mm -hmm. So if you get afraid, let that be a motivation to speak up, to vote. Everybody vote. Um, start doing a kind act. It could be a, a smile, helping somebody across the street, whatever it is, a small kind of act. And I think that helps to change the the energy it 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 makes it it uplifts things a kind of act uplifts yes. So. yes little acts of kindness go a long way don't jump in the valium yet that's my pez dispenser what are you talking about oh in my case uh put the razor blades back up on my shelf james cargill said that i love that <laughs> anyway um well, and do well, next just do a nice deed for somebody. Yeah, it, it doesn't cost you anything either to be nice to people. Doesn't cost a cent. All right, next week, your show, right? Yeah, and we'll have music too. Oh, there you go. Well, it's really not anybody's show. We just alternate weeks. We alternate channels. It'll be my channel. Channels, so it's just Aloha Tuesday with Arthur and Mel. Yay! All right. Until I look horrible in a Hawaiian shirt, so I don't wear one. There you go. Until next week, aloha nui, uh, nui loa. That means um, uh, lots of love. That means uh, aloha means hello. It means goodbye and it means love. So aloha nui loa with much love. Until next week, aloha. Whatever you just said. Nam and namaste. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>